Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the new workshop. It is so awesome to introduce you here. And introduce you here with my entire workshop surrounding me. This is unbelievable. I've got my milling machine in here, my lathe, my press, my power hammer, my other power hammer, all sorts of bits and pieces surrounding me. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool here right now. But it is a serious mess. Everything is scattered everywhere. It's total and utter chaos. There is zero order. And today's mission on this fantastic day, merch link in description, is to tidy up and make this a little more presentable. I'm gonna drill holes and anchor these power hammers down, generally tidy up, and have a fantastic time. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Goodness gracious me, this is extremely difficult trying to work out where everything is going to be laid out. I'm going to have to take some thinking time. So, this of course is the forge, and the reason that I didn't put it where I initially thought it was going to be, which was there, is I don't want any heat up hitting the lighting grid. So here it means that all the heat, plenty of space for the heat to rise without, without any worry about damaging these expensive lights. I want this anvil in front of everything, centered with all the other machines, because that thing going to make a beautiful shot when I'm working here with all this awesome equipment in the background. I need to make sure that wherever my striking anvil is placed, that a striker can get a full swing without hitting anything up in the air, and ideally also from this angle here. The issue we then have is the sledge comes up, and there are lights there. This vise is probably gonna go somewhere close to here, and the swage block, that's irrelevant because I don't mount that down, there aren't mounting points, and I almost never use it anyway. So overall, I'd say that things are going uh, pretty well with this kind of shuffling around of things. I need to sweep the floor and move a few more things around, and then what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill the holes and start actually anchoring, or putting in the anchors, putting in the chemical anchors for the two power hammers behind me. Okay, so I'm all set up and ready to go. I have a vacuum cleaner at the ready. We've got the air compressor and of course the SDS drill. I'm gonna be using a vinylista resin. So to get a good, uh, good tight grip with the stud and the concrete, what I do is I'm gonna need to drill a hole that's just a hair oversized, two millimeters oversize the, uh, the size of the stud that I'm gonna use. I drill the hole, I make sure it's completely clean, clean it out, brush it out. We then squeeze this through a mixing tube into the hole. We then put the stud in, and it takes a while to set, and in my experience with this equipment, and also dealing with like the fixing supplies, they have also recommended that I use the slowest setting stuff possible, especially in these kind of conditions, because it's being put under a lot of stress, lots of, lots of hammering, lots of vibrations, obviously, and this stuff sets unbelievably well. I've never had a stud pull out of the ground unless I did a poor job of cleaning the hole. On the Sehinla, I'm gonna be using 16 millimeter or five eighths roughly size studs that are gonna go into the ground. There are six around here and there are six on the Pilkington. There is however an issue on the Pilkington which is there is a flywheel in the way of one of the holes. I think I can just get to all the other holes but I'm gonna struggle right underneath the flywheel. The way that I think I'm gonna try and solve this issue is I'm gonna unbolt three of the bolts that hold the Pilkington to the base, crowbar it, pivot it on the crowbar, off to one side, which should enable me to safely get access to that last hole. I'm gonna crowbar it last, um, and I think that'll work pretty well.
have an issue. My crowbar is at the old workshop. Now, my plan today was to get all those holes drilled and the epoxy in there, and then go back to Norwich. Instead, because my crowbar's there, and I don't have a power hammer to forge a new crowbar with, or the steel, because that's all in Norwich, I'm gonna run back to Norwich, I'm gonna run some errands in the city, I'm gonna come back here, and then I'm gonna do that, and then that can cure overnight, and I should still be fine. I'm probably going to need to wash my hands, though. If only this was a little bit easier. Th that didn't work too well, but it it's better than nothing. Let's go to Norwich. And we're back in Norwich. Technology is so great. Welcome back to the workshop that now is a shell. A shell of what it once was. A shell of memories! Ah! So there are just a few little bits and bobs that I need to pick up from this workshop. I'm gonna do a little truckload here. I'm not gonna be emptying out this workshop completely just yet, we're gonna kinda trickle stuff out of here over the next little while. Here's that crowbar. Wasn't very smart of me to uh, leave this here yesterday. Apologies for the lack of continuity there. I went to run some errands, but I just worked out that I had to stay in Norwich a little bit more. So I'm now just gonna load up a hell of a lot of steel from my steel racks, put it on the top of my truck. Since I got the time and I've got the truck, I might as well. I think I got it pretty safe and solid. Because I have different diameters here, I have large ones here, small ones here, I ended up doing a, a wrap, two, two wraps to tighten them this way. In addition to clamping on the bigger stuff straight down with the, with the ratchet straps over the top. One of the things I always think about whenever I'm strapping something to my truck is there are people that actually know what they're doing when it comes to securing things. I wonder if there are courses that you can do. That'd be a really interesting thing to learn. Especially yesterday when we did the move and I'm seeing the, seeing the guy with the truck just rig things beautifully. It'd be something interesting to learn at some point. There's so many interesting things to learn in this world. And back to the workshop we go. Let's drill some holes. It is now time to drill some more holes, put some epoxy in there, cut some studs, put the studs in there, and then go get some sleep. Nope, not happening. I cannot work out how I can shuffle that thing over. So I'm gonna leave that one open. Where it was in the old part, in the other workshop, I actually had on the opposite side, no bolt in. So it's gonna be all right for now. I'll eventually make up a plate, and then I'll have a hole in the middle of the plate, and then I'll be able to tighten it down, and that'll then secure that little middle piece. For now, it's onto the Sehinla. Exhausted, but it has been so exciting getting this workshop closer to being done, closer to being ready to forge some hot steel in. Tomorrow I'm gonna to be doing some more work on these power hammers, getting these ready to be up and running. And by tomorrow evening, I think the electrician is gonna have all the plugs wired up, so we're gonna be able to turn them on. I hope, fingers crossed. Thank you very much for watching. I try and make videos as close to every day as possible. I'm working very hard to increase the quality, increase the levels of production quality, increase the fun and entertainment that you guys are gonna have.
have here watching this channel. So thank you very much for being here. It is, as ever, fantastic having had you here. Hint, hint, t-shirt, alexsteelshop.com. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow on the very next episode. Be sure to watch another two of my videos and hit subscribe if you're new. I will see you soon. Bye-bye.